Well, I grew up in West Virginia, and West Virginia to this day, uh, they still get a whole week off for Thanksgiving. I guess because of hunting, it's still a big deal there. And, and, uh, but I can remember in second grade, and this, I don't know why it's such a vivid memory, but I had a teacher, Mrs. Wharton, who happened to be my cousin, on both sides, because it's West Virginia, but... <laughs> but anyway, she was, uh, she was very serious. She was very serious, and the day before Thanksgiving, um, she looked out at us, and she said, we're going to have a quiz, and she put this, this test question up on the board, and I can remember it like it was yesterday. She wrote it up on the board, and... And she said, how you do on this test question will determine uh, what you have for homework over Thanksgiving break. And we were like, homework, Thanksgiving break? And of course, we didn't know any different. We were only second graders, but um, we thought it was a big deal. And, and so we started to do this mathematical uh, question uh, for a quiz or test. And, and as we get through, eventually, as we get to the answer, it was one of those things where each answer you got to cross out a letter, a uh, corresponding letter to the number answered. And so by the time it was over, it said, uh, no homework, happy Thanksgiving. Um, and so it was a trick question, a trick, a trick test, and, and uh, we did not have homework over Thanksgiving week um, as it stood. And I remember that. Maybe it like harmed me in some way. <laughs> I remember that like it was yesterday because of that trick question. Um, well, fast forward or, or go backwards in time, however we want to do it, or fast forward in the Bible. Jesus, uh, who's the greatest teacher of all time, and, and uh, you know his followers uh, considered him and, and called him rabbi and teacher. Um, so he knew all the tricks, but he would often... Uh, find himself in these situations where um, the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the lawyers just in general would try to give him a trick question. Uh, they would try to trip him up on a quiz or a test um, to try to uh, corner him and trap him into saying the wrong thing. Um, and one of the most famous of these um, happened to be uh, in a series of questions. And so it was almost like he was there in front of all the people and taking an oral exam. Uh, and they get to one where they just know, and I can just picture the Pharisees thinking they have him. And, and it goes something like this. Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Now this just wasn't any trick question. This was a common discussion or debate of the day because often they would try to look at the list and try to prioritize. And in fact, the court's system would prioritize as well and say you know, they wanted to put different punishments to different parts of the actual law. And so they wanted to try to trick him uh, into, uh, into an answer. And his reply, because again, he's the greatest uh, teacher of all time, um, is this. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. The second is like it. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. All the law and the prophets depend on these two commands. And so Jesus sums up the law. He fulfills the law. In fact, he says earlier in the gospel that he didn't come to abolish the law. A lot of times we forget that as Christians. He did not come to abolish the law. He came to what? Fulfill the law. And he says these two commands uh, fulfill all the law. And so basically love God and love your neighbor is how he sums it up. It wasn't only a wise answer that um, gets him out of that quiz or testing situation and puts the lawyers in their place. Um, it's also an answer um, that captures the essence of the Ten Commandments that we just uh, read about um, that um, from this series on Moses. And the way that it does that is, um, and this picture also captures it, I don't know if you can see it way in the back, but this is a picture of Moses on the coloring book, and he has um, two tablets. So he has two tablets, and the scriptures tell us he it's tablets plural. 
And so traditionally, it was viewed that tablet A had commandments 1 through 4 on it, and tablet B had commandments 5 through 10. And um, where Jesus is in line with this, and what is helpful for us, 1 through 4, um, think about those commands. You know, there is only one God. No idols. Um, don't use the Lord's name in vain. And, what's the fourth one? Remember the Sabbath. These are all commandments that help us love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. They're all in line. Uh, some uh, scholars or Sunday school teachers or preachers will say it's, it's to remind us of this vertical relationship that we have with God. And so tablet A are these four commandments, the first four, all deal with our relationship with God directly. If that makes sense, say amen. amen. All right, so that's Jesus. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then the second part of that is uh, love your neighbor. And so think about tablet B holding all those neighbor type of commands uh, or you know, loving others other than God. Five, honor your parents. You know, six, do not shoot your neighbor. Right, Stacy? Right. Stab. Don't kill. Seven. Honor your relationships. No adultery. That's walking down the aisle. See? Uh, eight. Don't steal or you'll end up in jail. That's the jail bars. Okay. Nine. Don't let these other nine people talk bad about you and lie about you. All right? And then ten. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Okay? So all, all, all six of those are about our relationship with other human beings. To love God and love other human beings. And, honor, and, and, that, um, ca and Jesus captured that in the answer uh, to the lawyer. And, and that is the essence of the original um, thought of the law coming out and coming from God uh, through Moses onto the tablets. Um, and so one of the things as, as we process that and maybe hear that uh, for the first time or are reminded of that, the nature of the, of the division there, is that it is no division at all, all right? And so where this, this picture is not helpful is it looks like um, the two tablets are separate uh, and maybe could be dealt with separately, uh, but I think that would get us off on the wrong track. The way that we attend to God, the way that we love God with all our heart, mind, and soul determines how it is we attend to our neighbor. All right, let me say that again. So how well and how it is that we love God, that we honor God, that we don't have other um, idols, that we keep a Sabbath, and that we don't use his name wrongly. How well we do those things determines how well we love other human beings. And... What's beautiful about this is vice versa. You know, how well we treat other people um, also, and how well we attend to our neighbor and love our neighbor uh, determines our way of, of dealing with God too. And so they're, they're less separate as Moses is holding them here and more interconnected, okay? Um, you, you, if you, if you and I, can love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, we can't help to love Mike. Uh, and if we don't love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, it's pretty darn hard to love Mike. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, but you understand, you get it, right? So, I mean, that, that, that kind of makes sense, right? Amen? Makes sense? All right? And so it's a very valuable way of, of looking at it. And it's, and it's when Moses comes down and he's going to start, start to share uh, with the, the people of God, the law uh, of God, um, it's going to be very important because they're, they're just really in the beginning of this wilderness experience. And we're not even talking about going out into the promised land, uh, but this is the way their life is going to be ordered together as they're roaming around uh, this terrible place, this wilderness, this barren desert area. Um, they're going to have to um, learn to not just to um, depend on one another, but depend on God. Um, not just to love God, but to love one another. And, and you can see all the valuable uh, lessons that come from the order of the law. 
So the way of attending to God determines our ways of attending to neighbor and vice versa. Now there's going to be times in the wilderness where the people of God, and, and this is for homework, please continue to read further. Again, just like the story from the beginning, there's going to be times where they do it very well. And they love God, and they trust God, and they love their neighbor, and they trust their neighbor. And then you're going to flip over one verse, and they're going to be mad at God, and they're going to be treating their neighbors terribly. Um, and it's going to be a, a, a cycle. Um, it's going to get so bad at one point, in terms of their relationship with God, um, that these original tablets are going to get broken. Moses is going to be so upset. It's going to be like mom last night, or Pastor Melissa last night at the dinner table. He gets so upset um, that he's going to throw the tablets down and they're going to break. And God's going to have to get him a new set. And so that's a great story. Um, it's a great story to read, not so you can say, oh, look at them, but you can say, oh, look at us. You know, this is us. This is not a story about a strange people a long time ago. This is a story about you and I and our own struggles with loving God with all our heart, mind, and soul and loving our neighbors as ourselves. It's going to be a lifelong journey. Um, and so um, you and I are on this together. The good news is that we don't go it alone. alone. We go together. And we go with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we go knowing that we're covered by God's grace. Uh, not just for when we mess up, but it's also that, that grace of God that enables us to even have that as a goal. To love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and our neighbors as ourselves. Um, one of the ways uh, uh, that we can think about this going forward is... In the words of um, John Wesley, founder of the Wesleyan movement, or the Methodist movement, um, and our, our guy, J.W., um, puts it in a special way. Um, a lot of times we, we uh, as Christians, we think of, well, the law and grace, how does that all work together? You know, and, and, and Wesley would say, the law of God and the grace of God are uh, two sides of the same coin, and it all works together. Um, and he and he said it did this in three different ways. I think this is a really helpful way to lead this as a Christian people and to go on um, with our life together in Christ. He says the law's purpose is to convict people of sin, and so think of holding up these tablets. The love your God tablet and the love your neighbor tablet, raising them up sort of like as a mirror. And so when we look at this law and we think about this law, there should be, there can be a convicting nature to it. And we can say, um, oh wow, you know, I didn't do so well in this category today. Or, you know, I didn't do so well loving my neighbor today. And so that, that we call convicting. So the Spirit can convict us. And so we have, we have some parameters to work with. Um, secondly, um, through that, you know, since it is a convicting, um, there is a convicting possibility by, of, of the commandments or the law, um, it can bring us to Christ. So, and the way that happens is, is we say, wow, you know, we can never do this alone. Um, and so we need... Jesus, and so there's a there's a drawing towards Christ uh, because of our, our failures of trying to obey uh, the law on our own. We can't do it alone. We need Jesus, and so it brings you to Jesus. And then the third for for us gathered here tonight, um, it, the third thing that the law does for us um, after we've been convicted, and conviction is probably more like a daily routine. Um, but also, after we've, we've seen the light and we've come to Christ, the third is helpful. It's, it guides us. It guides us into a Christian life. And so these are principles. This law, love your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and love your neighbor as yourself, um, can guide you um, into the way of a Christian life. That is a Christian way to live, to love your God and to love your neighbor. Um, and so... I'm thankful tonight on 
this Thanksgiving night for the work of Moses and his willingness to be an ordinary, flawed man to follow God's call and to lead the people um, in the adventures that he led them in and to be willing to receive the law from God. And I'm thankful certainly for Christ um, who came to fulfill that law and also is the agent of God's grace to you and I when we come up short in the law. And also it's the spirit of Jesus that helps us to live into that law in terms of a Christian life going forward. So I hope you are thankful as well. Amen. Amen.